the Application Lifecycle Risk Management Podcast, Episode 23, Web Forms versus MVC. The war is over. I just finished listening to a .NET Rocks podcast today with Paul Scherf, which largely talked about creating mobile websites using ASP.NET Web Forms. During the show, they discussed when you might use Web Forms versus MVC and pointed out that Web Forms still have their place, especially in the corporate world, since they are just as testable as MVC and yet much easier to get something up and running quickly. This is in contrast to a public-facing site that might need to be as lightweight as possible and therefore need the extra control that MVC can give you. And then there's the issue of legacy code. As they mentioned in the podcast, just because Microsoft has introduced a new technology doesn't mean we all have to go re-implement our websites in that technology the next day. It doesn't even mean we have to ever implement that technology. It's just another option in our toolbox. It's our job as developers and architects to know when the right time to use what technology is based on the requirements of the application and the skill sets of our development team. These are all points I've made in the past. The point I want to make today is this. The war is over. I'm surprised that this is still a conversation that the community is having. Both sides have lost to a sneak attack by single-page applications. If this is still a conversation you think is worth having, I'd suggest that you might be behind the learning curve. The .NET world has moved on. That is, client-side models and frameworks have taken over. What you use to produce the HTML that all that lives in is of very minor concern. I suppose if you are interested in creating applications that are old-style forms that post content to the server and refresh the page content or move on to another page, you might be interested in continuing to fight this war. But in my world, most of the applications I work on could be created using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript calling back to the server that consumes and produces JSON. In .NET, that would mean using Web API, which, while based on MVC, isn't MVC. For some examples of this, check out the Labels for Education site, which is a .NET Nuke site. .NET Nuke is a content management system based on WebForms technology. By using jQuery and Knockout, I was able to create the interactive portions of the site without using any WebForms technology directly. Instead, I just produced enough HTML and JavaScript in the ACX file that is the modules I developed to launch the main JavaScript application. You can check out how this looks on the following pages. Look at your Find Your School page, or the Participating Products page, or the UPC Lookup tab on the Participating Products page, or much of the sign-up logic in the Labels for Education website. You would be surprised at how very little code is in the code behind of my ACX files that each of my modules live in. In my current project, I'm using ext.js and ext.direct, which is based on Web API, to create single-page applications. Nothing that I'm currently doing requires that I do the work in either Web Forms or MVC. The beauty of a single-page application is that it never officially posts back, so it doesn't matter what you're using to hold the main application. Having said all that, there is a major drawback to single-page applications. You have to really know JavaScript. And I'm guessing, even though it is the most used language, the number of people who really know JavaScript relative to the number of people it would take to implement a good single-page application in a way that can be tested and maintained is relatively few. Now, I'm sure someone will argue that we still need something. In fact, as I was discussing this article with some of my peers, we recognized that Web Forms and MVC at least allow us to provide page-level security. But even that could be handled using a regular HTML page, either by applying the security at the IIS level or by implementing security in the Web API in JavaScript. And what if your page has no interactive components, or just a part of the page has some interactive components? 
Maybe the bulk of the content comes from a database. In that case, you can use either, and neither would necessarily be bad. The part that is posting back can be implemented using JavaScript and Web API. The rest can be implemented by turning off state management on web forms and using data binding and model view presenter or model view view model. I prefer model view presenter. Or you could go for MVC and Razor. Either will essentially get you where you need to go and be relatively lightweight. Although one could make the argument that MVC will give you more control. The question you have to ask though is, if you had the control, would you really use it? Does the performance gain relative to the traffic you expect to get and the level of experience your developers have make the switch to MVC worth it? Would it make more sense to concentrate training efforts on improving JavaScript and Web API skills? Just some things to think about. So, stop arguing about Web Forms versus MVC and put all that energy into really learning JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, because that's where you'll be spending a huge hunk of your time in the future as a web application programmer. The Internet has moved on. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript aren't just designer eye candy tools anymore. They're first class development tools that you need to learn now if you plan on being marketable five to ten years from now. For the links to items mentioned in this podcast, make sure you check out my blog at blog.dmbc llc.com. A link to this article is in the show description.